Alright, so what I want to do in this video is develop a systematic method for finding analytical solutions to differential equations like the one we had in the previous video. So this method is called separation of variables and it applies to a relatively large class of first order differential equations called uh, separable equations. Okay, so let's get started. So let's, let's go back to the equation that we had. So instead of using p and t, I'm going to use y and x, y being the function x the variable, just to get away from the population dynamics interpretation. So the equation was dy dx is equal to constant times the function y. Now, by the way, this equation has applications in lots of, lots of different contexts, for example, radioactive decay, uh, the bacterial growth of a population, or uh, the tumor, the growth of a tumor, tumor in the brain, or, I mean, there's, there's really tons of applications. So this is a very important uh, uh, differential equation. Okay, so how can I find solutions to these differential equations? Well, the first step uh, should be to try to find constant solutions. So these are also called equilibrium solutions. What does that mean? So you're trying to find here functions y equals a constant that satisfy the equations. We have to treat them separately. Now, if y is equal to a constant, the, the derivative here is exactly zero. Right? So in other words, what you're trying to find is uh, constant values of y for which the right-hand side will also be zero. In this case, there's a single such constant value, which is y equals to zero. Right? If y equals to zero, the right-hand side is zero, but the left-hand side as well, because it's a constant, so its derivative is zero. Now, that makes sense, right, from the bacterial, from the population point of view, because y equals to zero would mean Suppose you have no population at all, then of course it won't grow or it won't decay, it's just going to remain zero forever. All right, so that was the, the easy part. Now, how can we find the general solution to this differential equation? So the idea is the following. The idea is to separate variables. So what does that mean? So what that means is that we want to bring all the y's on one side and all the x's on the other side. Now here I can do that using a little hand wavy move that I will justify in class. So what I can do here is divide by y on both sides of the equation and multiply by dx on both sides of the equation. So that is where the hand wavy thing, multiplying by dx, is not really rigorous, but it is if you understand things in terms of differentials, or in fact you can prove using the chain rule that what, 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 what we're going to do makes sense, and I'll do that in class uh, this week. All right, so we divide by y and multiply by dx, and we end up with the equation 1 over y times dy is equal to k times dx. Now, by the way, I could put the k's on both sides. I could divide by k. It wouldn't matter because k is a constant, so it does not depend on x or y. But the idea here, the important part, is that all the y's are on one side and all the x's are on the other side. So whenever you can do that, we say that the equation is separable, and this is what separation of variables is about. All right, and then the third step is to integrate the equation. So when we separated variables here, we assume that y is not equal to 0, so that we're not in the context of this constant solution, which is fine, so that's why we treated those separately. All right, so now we want to integrate. So we're going to rewrite. We can take the integral of this expression on both sides. Now, this only makes sense if it is separated, so if all the y's are on one side and all the x's are on the other side. But if it is separated, then I can do that. And then both sides is just a standard indefinite integral, so I can certainly integrate it and get the answer. Now, sometimes you may not be able to integrate it, then you can't find the analytical solution, but in, in many cases you can, like this one, so we're just going to do that right now. All right, so we integrate on both sides. So if I integrate the left-hand side, I get the log, the absolute value of y, and then the right-hand side, I get k times x plus constant of integration that we'll call d. Very important. Don't forget the constant of integration. This is where the constant in the general solution of the differential equation comes from. OK, so this would be the solution. But of course, what I'm really interested in is y as a function of x. So I, I, I would prefer not to have it in this kind of implicit form. So the last step here, when it is possible, is to solve for y as a function of x. Uh, it's not always possible, but here it is possible. So I can take the exponential on both sides. I get that the absolute value of y is e to the kx plus d, which is really just e to the d times e to the kx. All right, and now I want to get rid of the absolute value. So now there's a little trick here. So what we know is that the absolute value of y is equal to this, which is a positive number. 
So what that means is that y is going to be equal to plus or minus this. So what I can do, so e to the d is an arbitrary, e to the d is an arbitrary positive constant. So if I want to get rid of the absolute value, I want y to be equal to plus or minus this, which I can do by introducing a new constant c, where c now is arbitrary non-zero constant. So it can be both positive or negative. Right, so the positive signs, when, whenever it's positive, I'll get the e to the d. When it's negative, I'll get the opposite signs that I could get by removing the absolute value. And that would give me my general solution. In fact, here I can also remove the non-zero constraint. So c becomes an arbitrary constant because whenever c is zero, I just recover the constant solution, which I found in the first step. All right, so that gives me now the full general solution of the differential equation, which is indeed exactly what we guessed in the previous video. All right, so let me try now to summarize what the method of separation of variables is in the more general context of separable equations. So first, uh, when are we uh, able to separate variables? So we say that a first-order differential equation is separable if it can be written in this way. So dy dx is equal to a product of a function of x and a function of y. Now, not all functions, all differential equations can be written like that. For example, dy dx equal x plus y is not separable because you cannot write x plus y as a product of a function of x and a product of a function of, and a function of y. This is the sum of two functions. So this is not separable, but something like dy dx equals x times y would be separable because the right-hand side is a product function of x and a product of function of y. Okay, and the reason that we want that is that if it is separable, I can always separate variables by dividing by f of y and multiplying by dx, just like I did in the previous case. So how do we proceed? Well, we really go uh, through the three-step process. So first, we find the equilibrium of the constant solutions. So these will be whenever f of y is equal to 0 for a constant y. So if you have such a constant y, because if it's constant, the derivative is 0, that would be a solution. So you first find these constant solutions. You have to treat them separately. And then you can assume that f y is not 0, so you're not in this, the first case. You can divide by fy, multiply by dx to separate variables, just as we did. And finally, you integrate both sides. Don't forget the integration constants. And in the end, uh, you probably want to uh, solve for y as a function of x to get an explicit form for the solution, the general solution of the differential equations. So this is the method of separation of variables. Now, what I'll do in class is just justify that this is uh, correct. There's a little n wavy step here, multiply by dx. So I'll justify that this is perfectly fine using the chain rule. That will be done in class this week.